Welcome to our Operational Intelligence Marketplace. Today we're talking to um, Asa Holmgren and Nicholas Borkman of Star Counter, and they're going to give us a product demo or they're going to share with us a simulated uh, customer application. So please take it away and you can share um, your desktop. And Nicholas, if you speak, could you make sure you're a little closer to the microphone, please? Okay, so now I'm going to turn the, um, give you the floor, and you should be able to access, there we go, and we're going to your desktop. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Mary Jo. So uh, I just want to verify you see the star counter demonstration on your screen as well, right? Yes. Good. So star counter, we provide the world's highest performing database. And today we have prepared a demonstration for you where we compare the star counter database with a traditional relational database. Now the star counter database is more than 100 times faster than any traditional relational database, where it 10 times comes from being an in-memory database and an additional 10 times comes from our patented DMDBMS technology where we integrate the application with the database management system. So within the crowded database market, with all the different kinds of database vendors, what is the star counter niche? First of all, our focus is real-time operational systems that handles live data. And it's applications supporting millions of simultaneous users. And we fully support transaction processing and we do it with true consistency, with asset compliant transactions. So this application is built to demonstrate the performance in a bank application. We simulate here that tens of thousands of persons will check their account balances, and at the same time, tens of thousands of other persons will transfer funds between two different accounts. And I will actually start this uh, demonstration today uh, by starting the traditional relational database part of it. So the checking balance part is fairly simple. One operation for each of the tens of thousands of transactions. But, however, trans transferring money will actually consist of several operations to the database within every of these tens of thousands transactions. First, you will need to check the balance of both accounts that are involved. Then you need to make the subtraction on the sending account and the addition on the receiving account. Before all is completed, you need to write the new values to both accounts. As thousands of persons are doing all of this, at the same time, there might also be conflicts between the transactions. When handling true asset transaction, it is therefore necessary to complete one transaction before the next one can start. And as you can see here now um, on the screen, uh, the transaction on the top row, we completed about 12,000 right now. And on the time below, it's uh, about uh, a little bit more than one minute. So we are um, getting there. Um, and this installation today is done uh, on the same computer for the traditional relational database as the star counter database. And today this is actually run on, on my laptop, and um, which is of course not the, the typical server hardware. And both the traditional relational database and the star counter database would perform better if it would be uh, a server so software. But uh, hardware, but the relationship between them are about the same. So there we completed uh, the full 20,000 uh, transactions uh, for the traditional relational database, and it is 1 minute and 48 seconds, which basically is 108 seconds. And uh, please now pay attention, because this is going to be faster. Now I'm going to start the star counter part, and there it is completed. It takes about one second on this simple computer today for Star Counter to complete the 20,000 transaction. 
and you can set this in comparison to the 108 seconds as it took for the traditional relational databases. Wow. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. So you, you're, you're effectively just performing this all on what, a laptop? Yeah, it's an, oh, I'm looking at Niklas now, some i7 I double core thingy. It's a pretty good laptop. <laughs> okay, okay, not, not, not a netbook, right. I, I figured that that was probably the case. So how much memory is in there, roughly speaking? I think you have... I think I have eight, yeah. actually. Eight gigabytes. And, and did you kind of unload the RDBMS before you ran Star Counter, or are you just actually the the software for the RDBMS is still loaded? Is that the, which which is the case? Yeah, the the RDBMS is still there, so if you should start making requests, it's going to to answer your. Okay, so it's, it's slightly skewed because the, there will be residues of stuff in memory from the RDBMS, won't there? So Star Counter could have had more memory, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It, it could have. Yeah, I mean, I understand. It, it, none of this uh, takes away from what you just demonstrated, which no, is... No, the other way around, actually. <laughs> exactly, you know, so, so yeah. that's kind of the, the question... Um, really, I just wanted to establish this, but normally, of course, you would do this on a server and you would still be coming up with a, um, a, about a 100 to 1 result. Do you have any specific um, use of flash memory or SD, uh, SSD? No, actually, we are running everything in, in, in RAM, so we are moving everything. Oh, no, in this, but when, when you normally deploy it, I was thinking, do you, do you use SSD or is it just straight memory and um, processor power that you'd rely on? Uh, it is. You could gain some performance in the writing process if you have an SSD, but everything is done in memory during the uh, every reads and such. So the SSD wouldn't benefit store counter as much as the... Uh, no, no, I mean, the reason I'm asking is just from the, from the user perspective as you want you aren't requiring any specially configured server to run this. You're just doing, well, you would obviously maximize the memory on the server, but otherwise. I would say you that don't having a, a good hard drive with a good, good internal cache is, is helping more than anything. Right, so, I mean, a lot of the questions I could ask, I think, probably answer themselves. I'm sure that you actually maximize the parallelization across the. Um, processes, you couldn't possibly achieve anything like this if you weren't doing that. Is the, um, you talk about two things. You talk about, okay, it runs out of memory, uh, and because it's completely pinned in memory, that gives it a huge advantage because it's not pulling stuff off disk. Well, that's fair enough. And you equate that to 10 times. But the other 10 times you're saying is, uh, is due to the way that the application interfaces with the database, if I understand you correctly. I'm just kind of interested, as if you can explain technically why that gives you such a big lift. It is that the VMD BMS makes it possible yeah. for, the, for the database and the application to share the same memory. So they share the object heap. So whenever you do modifications in the application, you're actually modifying the database object at the same time. So you don't even have to move data internally in memory. And that makes it that, that much faster. Of course, everything is encapsulated, so you don't have dirty reads or um, seeing other transactions and such. So would you describe the way that you hold the data in memory as kind of object-based? Yes. Yeah, 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 it would have to be. So you could actually, on top of this, we have the query language is running on top of the .NET uh, objects that you have. So whenever you're fetching a, a result from a query, you get the... the .NET uh, objects back so you can start working with them immediately without moving data. Right, interesting. So is this is this um, only running on Windows or do you also run it over Linux? It, for right now it's it's only on Windows, but we have planned to move also into to Java Linux space and, and that's not that hard of a work because most of the core stuff in StarCount is made in C and, and Assembler. Okay. Well, I think that's, those are all the questions I have. Um, Mary Jo, do you have any questions? No, I just, um, I think you said it in the beginning, you know, it, for the general um, general customer, this is, they don't exactly um, 
they see your fast engine, but um, just for a generic person, it's harder for them to understand. Um, so when you're – let's talk about your competition for a, a minute. At that NoSQL show, there were a lot of other fast databases. Um, are you comparing yourself to them, or are you setting yourselves apart in these particular industries you're in, you know, retail, gaming, um, ad serve, uh, things like that? and appealing to ISVs, or are you trying to compete with Cassandra and some of those other um, databases that are out there? I, I, I mean, there are so many different players with, within the NoSQL space, so it's, it's really difficult to, 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 to see who is doing what. But I think it's really important to, to look into, you know, what kind of application is it that you could run on top of Star Counter? First of all, Nothing that is analytics, that's not what we do. We do the operational part with the live data. And then, you know, many that do operational applications or systems do not need the transactional support that we have. But if you do, then we could be something for you. And then when you come up to these huge volumes and you really need true consistency, not eventual consistency, not the, the newest thing that I heard, uh, consistency within milliseconds, that's not what we talk about. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like eventual consistency with a bit yeah, more speed. Add it down to milliseconds. <laughs> no, but, I mean, seriously, we do true consistency. And if you have those kind of needs, that's where we fit in. But, you know, no SQL, that's for anyone who is, you know, an early adopter that dares to go into look into new things. So we consider ourselves parts of no SQLs but more part of new SQL. So, you know, when it comes down to vendors like VaultDB, for example, we consider them competitors of ours. That makes perfect sense. And so much of this is based on use case, and you are um, telling that story very well, I think. So, you know, the whole operational, not analytical. I really like that. Yeah. Well, the, the other thing that occurs to me is this just seems like a very nice match with SAP's HANA. Are, are you talking to SAP and it, about it, being, Swed being Swedish and, and, and you know close to Germany? Uh, yes, we have been sp speaking to them before, but you know their their first focus has been analytical, right? And and ours is operational. So um, we we are really happy about everything they do within the market where they legitimize the uh, IMDB analysis, where they legitimize that you need to rewrite applications to get full performance out of a new technology. So uh, we really appreciate what they do out there, uh, but we don't have any, any, any um, um, relationship with them right now. Yeah, I would presume they're, they're focusing on um, pushing their own database portfolio before they do anything else. But I would have thought that in the longer term, you're just a natural match because they do not have anything like this. It's quite clear. Yeah. Okay. Well, very good. I really, um, really appreciate your time today, and you just are a perfect fit for our operational intelligence marketplace. Just going to be great. 